Hello Year 10, I hope you are safe and well. It's Mr Angier here. Um, just a quick uh, reminder, I'm doing the PowerPoints for Year 10. However, you still need to submit all your work to your usual classroom teacher. So welcome to the first of our recorded PowerPoints. Um, and these PowerPoints are designed to support you in doing the work for this term. What are the key river processes is our first lesson. This is what we have asked you to do in this first week and this is designed to help you develop an overall understanding of how a river changes from source to mouth. From there we can get a more in-depth view of um, what actually happens in the upper, middle and lower course and what job the river is doing and how that changes. In order to successfully do the work for this week, you will need to know what a river profile is. And um, by that, I mean the long profile and the cross profile. You need to know what the three river courses are and you need to know how a river changes from source to mouth. And that's what this PowerPoint is going to help you to do. So the long profile of a river is shown to you here. Now, put simply, all it means is um, the journey that a river takes from its source, which will be up here, the source is where the river starts, to its mouth, which is down here, and the mouth is where the river spills out into either the lake or the sea. So in other words, where the river finishes. So the long profile is the journey from the source to the mouth. It's basically the length of the river. That differs from the cross profile. The cross profile is um, basically a cross section. So you can see here the river's been split in half and we are interested in simply what the river looks like. Now I just want you to consider for a moment why it's important that we are aware of both of these things. So this is um, a slightly more in-depth version of the diagram I showed you just a moment ago. You can see we've got some um, of the key features that I just mentioned. The source is up here, the mouth is down here, but for the first time we've got these dotted lines here which indicate the upper, middle and lower course. When we say upper, middle and lower course, we just mean the stages of the river because as this diagram demonstrates, the river flows through different environments and the river changes. So up here in the upper course, generally speaking, we're characterized by the, the river being um, at a, a higher gradient. Okay, It's a steeper gradient up here. And as you can see, as we move more towards the middle and the lower course, the land really flattens out. It's also clear that the river is doing something else. The river in the upper course is quite small and as it moves into the middle course it gets slightly larger and by the time it reaches the lower course it's at its widest and its most powerful. The river is also doing something else um, which is it is beginning to wind. Now we will talk about this in future weeks in far more detail but the river up here is really, or the direction of the river up, up here in the upper course, is really determined by the land. So the river, being a young and weak river, will flow in between rocks and um, uh, it, it's, it's largely um, dictated by where the, the softer ground is. Now by the time you get into the um, middle course and the lower course, the river has become much, much more powerful and the river actually starts changing the land. So rather than the river um, being dictated, or flow of the river being dictated by the land in the upper course, in the middle and the lower course, the river is actually powerful enough to erode the land and actually create new environments all by itself. So to build on that, um, these are the cross profiles for the upper, middle and lower course. And as you can see, um, in the upper course, we tend to have very steep sided um, valleys and a very small, thin channel. 
in the middle course the river is starting to get a little bit wider um, and the river is certainly carrying more water and again the lower course is an exaggerated version of the middle course where the river is um, at its deepest and widest. Now there's a reason for these changes and some of these reasons are shown above. So in the upper course the river is doing a different job to what it's doing in the middle and lower course and in the upper course you've got some vertical erosion. Now that means that the river is eroding downwards. So if you have a look at the arrow there the river is eroding downwards and it's beginning to transport some material. We'll talk about transportation in next week, um, next week's lesson. But the good news is transportation works in the same way that it does in coasts um, and it, all it means is moving material. Now in the um, middle course, um, we have got a bit of lateral erosion. So all of a sudden the river is becoming a bit more powerful now and it's beginning to erode the sides of the valley that it's in. You can see here that the river is really not powerful enough to erode these areas here in its upper course when it's young. Um, but by the time we get to the middle course, the river is now beginning to erode the sides. Um, and um, this continues again into the lower course where there's lots of lateral erosion. Um, but the difference between the lower and the upper course is that where we've got transportation occurring and perhaps a little bit of deposition in the middle course, really the main um, deposition uh, takes place in the lower course. And deposition, again, you might need to look that back up, but it just means uh, that stuff is getting dropped off. A material is being picked up, transported, uh, transported and dropped off somewhere else. Deposition is the dropping off. Uh, again, um, this diagram just demonstrates um, what I've said in the previous diagram, but I think it puts it all together very nicely. So you can see how the gradient changes from the upper course where it's very, very steep. And you can see that there is a river valley, uh, which is vertical. Um, oh, sorry, which is being um, vertically eroded. You can see how the wetted perimeter or the cross profile has changed, how the river gets wider and shallower in the lower course, um, and certainly how tr the material which started up here um, has been weathered and eroded, and it's going to be transported, uh, and it's going to end up down here in the lower course. Now, this is probably um, the most complicated diagram that you're going to see certainly today in geography, but it's really um, important this one because rather than saying what the river is doing differently, it's just showing you what it looks like in lots more detail. And I would like you to pause the PowerPoint in just a moment and I would like you to make sure that you are clear what all of these different um, uh, these different things are on here. Okay, so um, yeah, what is a, what is a waterfall? What's a tributary? What's a floodplain? What's an oxbow lake? Now, in the next three weeks, we're going to break down the upper course, which is this bit here, the middle course, and the lower course in lots more detail. So, what would be really really useful is if you were really clear what all of these features of each. Um, part of a river, the upper, middle and lower course are. Now finally, um, this YouTube video is really, really useful. It is a little bit dated now, uh, but it's about the River Severn, which is the longest river in the UK, and um, it demonstrates really nicely how the river changes from its source to its mouth. So I would recommend you watch it. Uh, it's around about 20 minutes long. Thank you very much. I hope you found uh, this introduction useful. And as mentioned before, please remember to send your work to your usual classroom teacher. Stay safe.